Hi guys, it's Jamie here. Welcome to tutorial two. In this tutorial, we're going to finish the front cover and make something for this pocket and something for the tuck spot and decorate the pocket. I've chosen this paper for the back and the front of my cover. The first thing I'm going to do is put this down and then we'll do one of the ephemera pieces, which I've actually sprayed to protect it and also because it gives it a little sheen with Crafter's Companion Spray and Shine. You just give it a light coat. That is going to go centrally on that plain green card or paper background on the front cover as well. So all of that just needs to be laid down. You can use any glue you want. I'm probably going to try and do it, although it's always a risk with double-sided tape because if you don't get the lining up right, you're kind of committed. However, it does mean that you don't get glue splodges everywhere. What I've decided to do, now this is on, and I think it's really pretty, but I want it a bit more protected, so I am going to spray the whole thing with Crafter's Spray. I wasn't going to because I wasn't sure about the edges. I will turn it over and do the spine area and the back when that's dried. For the inside of the cover, I've decided to add some lace across this pocket. To add it, I'm just going to put a little bit of my all-purpose glue on the more solid pieces of the lace in an attempt to avoid the glue showing through. It doesn't always work. You do have time with this style glue before it dries. It's quite slow to dry. I did spray the inside of this cover with the Crafters Clear Gloss that I used on the front because I wanted to protect this paper. The reason I wanted to protect this paper was I would like to use my stencil and add a decoration to that top corner tuck spot on the back inside cover. I'm going to try to hold it in place using that masking tape and fingers. I have here a gold metallic marker pen. I'm going to follow my stencil. Hopefully I've managed to join most of that up. On this side only I give this another coat of the spray and shine. While I personally love the plainness of the reverse, you can, if you wish, add a small pocket or tuck spot. I won't be doing so in this case. I will be making a tag for this pocket and something for this tuck spot. Here I have a large tag that fits the pocket on the inside cover and somehow I've managed to smudge it with ink. Therefore, I'm going to use this tag and add to it with a scrap background. Taking scraps from this project and possibly a previous one, I'm going to tear some edges all the way around. You don't have to do this. If you like things straight cut, you can straight cut them. When they're all torn up, the next thing I will be doing is, of course, taking my Distress Vintage Photo and going round all the edges. Now I've torn and stained some scrap pieces, using my decoupage brush and Mod Podge, I'm covering this pre-made label with those pieces. This is a wonderful way to do unique tags because you do not have to think too much about the placement of the pieces. What you want to make sure is that each piece is firmly down with a coating of Mod Podge over the top. I 
Here I have this beautiful poppy napkin. However, it's not going to reach the top and the bottom of the tag. We will fix that after we get it down. Put a napkin over a masterboard. We want to peel it back to the first ply. That way it becomes quite see-through and it will wrinkle and wrinkles are part of the look. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use the Mod Podge again. I'm going to place it to the base of that tag so that the majority of what doesn't have a napkin is at the top. Once it's on, the top coat has to go on quite gently because napkin when it's wet can tear very easily. Now we will be tearing at the edges for a natural look. I don't want to do that just yet. You can still see this straight lines where it's all joining. I can't find my sanding block which is a little bit annoying so what I'm going to do is add a touch of water to the edge and try to create a more natural join. Now that's sanded down and smoothed off and hopefully any bits taken off, the next thing to do is to add another layer of the Mod Podge. Distress up the edges to border the tag. Now we have a border which helps bring the eye into the centre of the tag. I'm also at this stage going to re-punch that hole. Now I can put a string or a ribbon through that. On the reverse side it has got a bit grotty, however we are going for an old look. Just take our vintage photo again and make that look absolutely deliberate might just make those edges a bit stronger yeah that's worked my final touch before adding a ribbon will be to put my gloss spray over it because i have been using it quite liberally i'm going to use this piece from the actual kit back it with card, place it under that tuck spot. I've stained the edge and I've also stained the card that it's been added to. In my stencils I found something that vaguely reminds me of a poppy, therefore I'm going to use my, my ink and a blending brush. Actually my blending brush is in a different colour so I may use a different colour ink peeled paint which is a green to add this stencil to the back of this card. Let's see how that worked or didn't work. Yeah that will do. Our journal cover is completed. We have the tag with the ribbon added to go in that deep front pocket and we have this beautiful journal card to go into that tuck spot. In the next tutorial we will be selecting, preparing and decorating the main papers.